In this video, I'll show you how you can allow your users to play an audio file and give them full control in Adobe Captivate. Okay, let's get started here. So I got a, um, a message from Olga Gilman and uh, she has two questions related to uh, event video, which is a, a video that I posted recently. Um, the first question is, as you described in the event video, you have controls. Is there a way to have event audio? And what she means by that is audio with its own playback controls. She'd like to have a play button that would allow to play an audio, that part is easy, and to have playback controls like pause, resume, rewind, and a slider that would allow you to start from any place in the audio. Nothing fancy, standard stuff. And part two of the question, in another video, you've shown how to build a custom play bar. Is it possible to add a slider in a custom slide play bar, which would show and allow you to move along just the current slide movie, not the whole course movie? Um, so one thing I can address here, the first thing, <laughs> there's a lot here. Um, the first thing I'll, I'll deal with, of course, is the ability to play an audio file. So let's come back to this question, Olga, and maybe I'll address that separately. But I started to think about the whole audio thing, and um, I think I have a solution that might work for you. So let's take a look at that now. So let me just uh, bring up Adobe Captivate 9 here, and I've just got a blank slide, nothing fancy here. And uh, what I have is a file that I downloaded from YouTube, it's a, a video, or sorry, it's an audio recording um, that's for the YouTubers out there who want to create their own background music. They make a series of audio files that are freely available for you to use. And I've saved that uh, just to my desktop right here. So no big deal, we can, we can use that um, however we see fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, First thing I'm going to do is um, create a button. Now my thinking was is that certainly there is the opportunity to create a button and trigger an audio event and it just will play it and you can press it a hundred times and play it a hundred times and for a lot of cases I think that would probably be suitable. In fact I've done that uh, the similar thing before. So, but we're going to do something a little different with this one. This, we're going to put a button on this page here. And of course you can call it what you will. I'll just make it a little larger here. Let's go to the position panel here and make sure it's right in the center there. Uh, but of course you can place it anywhere you want. Properties panel. Let's give it a name. Play audio. And you could go so far as to maybe say in a new window or something like that. So the actions for this, instead of uh, simply um, playing audio, which would be your first instinct, I'm actually going to open the URL or file. And I think you'll start to see why in a few moments here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the name of the file. And I'm just doing this on my other desktop right now. So you can't see it there. And I'm just going to paste it in as the URL. So this is literally the name of the file. Now, um, I'm not going to load it into the library or anything like that because we're going to deal with that after. And we're going to select not to open this in the current window because presumably you're going to want the users to return to your course and then continue with the rest of the slides. So we're going to put it into a new window. Now that's going to create uh, this, this option to check off continue playing the project. I'm going to suggest that you're probably going to want to uncheck this because while they're playing this audio file in a new window or in a new tab in your browser, you don't want the course continuing in the background. You want it to wait for them to return. Now there is a pause on this particular button here, um, but let's add a next button so that uh, in the future, and we don't really need it for this particular slide, but let's just say, we'll just call that go to next slide and uh, we'll put a timer on that 
and uh, display for the rest of the slide. In fact, we'll do that for both of the buttons. And in fact, we'll take the pause off of the play audio one. And there'll be a pause on this one here. And that is simply going to take you to the next slide, if there was one. Um, so it's very typical of what a course would be. Maybe you've got some graphics here to go along with this. And uh, what I'm going to do, just double check everything here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to work fine. And uh, what we're going to do at this point here is we're going to publish this. Now, I would normally preview this, but of course, I need to publish it and then put the appropriate audio file in the published folder. Now, if you're creating a SCORM package, you're going to need to put that, that audio file in the zip with the rest of the published files. But I'm actually going to publish this to my Dropbox. And uh, the reason is, is that I can actually make the Dropbox, if you have a public folder and subscribe to a certain type of Dropbox, and I'll put a link to that video as well, you can actually have it work like a web server for you. It's really great for testing. So let's just uh, publish this. We're going to call it Audio Test. And I'm just going to publish that there. It shouldn't take... Uh, any time at all. Now you'll get this warning, this HTML publish. The files project listed below are linked to the open project. The linked file projects may require exporting. What this is basically saying in a nutshell is, is that you're pointing to a file that it doesn't know where it's located. So make sure that you place this file in the project folder, which is what I'm going to do at this point right now. So I'm going to open up my local folder where my Dropbox files are, are residing. And we're going, going to go into the public folder where you can access from the, the web. And here's that audio test. So here's all the files that are part of this particular uh, course or project here. Now all I need to do is I need to drop the the audio test file into this uh, folder here so we'll just copy it so now it's going to find it of course it's synced with the web here if you uh, actually have a, a dropbox account like this with a public folder you need to right click on the index file and copy the public link and then of course you can now test this course out in any browser that you wish. So let's just open up a new tab here and I'm going to paste and go and we'll see how this works. So there's uh, there's our project right here. This should pause in a moment once it gets to that pause. Now that pauses on the next button but we have this play audio button here. So let's test this out. Now right now I'm using Google Chrome so we'll see what the results are for that. <laughs> So as you can see, it gives you play and pause control. It gives you the ability to use the progress bar. You've got some indication of time and you even have a volume control. And this is all built into Google Chrome. Um, we can try this actually with other browsers as well. Let's open the new Microsoft Edge browser. And we'll just uh, resize this a little bit so it doesn't totally fill our screen. And I will paste this in here. We'll see what this does. So buttons look a little bit different, but essentially it's the same course. If I press play audio, let's see what happens here. So a little bit different interface, but basically the same sorts of controls. Uh, you have that progress bar. This is only a 10 second clip. Of course, if you had a five minute uh, language conversation that you wanted uh, learners to play, they would have a lot more control with that progress bar. They'd be able to take it back five, six, seven, 10 seconds, whatever they need. Um, so that gives you a pretty good idea. I'd be uh, interested to see if anyone wants to try this with 
with a Mac to see what it looks like in Safari. I don't have a Mac, so I can't do that for you. But uh, hopefully this will give you the types of results that you're looking for. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful, useful, or interesting, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.